Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to discuss the future of AMD's graphics technology, which will utilize chiplets. Chiplets have been used to great effect by AMD for their CPUs. Debuting with the Zen 2 microprocessor architecture, chiplets have allowed AMD to push the core counts up for desktop, let's say the 3950X and its 16 cores, to high-performance Threadripper and uh, Epic processors featuring 64 cores. The benefits of chiplets we've touted many times on the channel, but as a quick reminder, lower power consumption, lower cost of production since yields could be higher versus creating a higher core count monolithic die, and overall it gives a great sense of flexibility and scalability for their processors. This has been imperative for AMD to compete, of course, with Intel, but it also means that they have the flexibility and just the ability to create these high core count processors which are going to be just required for the future of computing, especially with the slowing down of Moore's Law. Basically, Moore's Law isn't technically speaking slowing down if you look at the wider way you can consider Moore's Law, for example, chiplets and other things, it's just the manufacturing processes and other more traditional ways of looking at Moore's Law has been, let's say, slow it down. Even, even uh, Jim Keller from Intel has said very similar. Well, uh, now he's left Intel. But um, bottom line anyway is that this MCM type of approach is, of course, going to be implemented with GPUs as well. We've already seen Raja Kodori, who is now at Intel, uh, really push this with the tile architecture we've seen in Intel XE. NVIDIA will be doing the same with Hopper, although it has apparently been delayed, and AMD will be doing it with some type of future GPU as well. Now, there is a patent which has emerged. We'll go through it in just a moment. But it is worth noting that we don't exactly know what this patent is referencing. So it could be for gaming, RDNA, or it could also be CDNA, which is more data center. Furthermore, a patent is just a patent. A patent isn't necessarily a product. And even if a patent does become a product, the implementation may be different to what we're seeing here. So obviously with GPUs, we have thousands of uh, processes essentially in a GPU which do tasks and they work in parallel. Synchronizing data is incredibly important with a GPU. So if you are looking to uh, ask the GPU to perform many jobs in a row, which is obviously kind of the job of a GPU, if the GPU is waiting on a specific instruction to return um, an answer back, let's say, for example, you have a complicated mathematical problem. Let's say you want to know uh, for question A what 1 plus 1 is, and then for question B what a would be plus another two. Now, you can't work that out if you don't know what the original question is. And GPUs are basically like that. You need data to be synchronized or you get massive delays in instructions. I've gone over this much more extensively in a Sony video. I'll try to remember which one it is, but I'll link it in the video description if I do remember. Either way, synchronization, therefore, and also the way that data is distributed across uh, those GPUs is one of the problems that AMD are trying to rectify with this patent. And they are doing so by implementing what they are calling the high bandwidth passive crosslink. So basically you have two GPUs which are tied together using this high bandwidth uh, crosslink and then a CPU is connected to one of them. Now the crosslink honestly looks a little bit like you would see um, with a, an interposer connecting a high bandwidth memory, but obviously the implementation is a little different here. So again, the purpose of this is to enable high speed communication between the two dies. So in traditional GPU designs, you have an LLC or last level cache. This could be level three, level two, depending on the design. For the sake of this, I'm just going to call it level three. So the idea here is that with this MCM design, you will still retain an LLC per GPU, but you will still need to be able to access it and make sure that you have data synchronicity between these uh, between these two GPUs. In other words, you can't have a situation where the data of one cache is old. So all of this is going to come together to form 
a different approach for GPU computing. Now the question is whether this is for RDNA free or whether it's for CDNA or maybe even a later iteration of RDNA, maybe RDNA 4 or something like that. Now that right there is a $64 million question. Um, personally, I've seen a ton of rumors that we will actually see it for RDNA free, but maybe it's been held back as after all Nvidia did hold back Hopper, at least allegedly, and that's why we're seeing NVIDIA release Lovelace, which is, again, uh, a single monolithic die. The thing about NVIDIA 2 is that they've already done a lot of internal testing. Uh, I've covered this also quite recently on the channel, and their internal testing of an MCM design did show a massive gain in not only performance, but of course, a much larger chip that you can produce using MCM. And obviously AMD have been pioneering this with Zen. I'm gonna be extremely curious to see how all of this comes together, especially given Sony too have been pushing MCM type of chiplets for, um, well, some people have said it's for a PlayStation 5 Pro, but it also could certainly be used for a cloud gaming type of setup. And there are a lot of similarities between AMD and uh, Sony's implementation here. But of course, that is what you would consider normal when you're dealing with these type of patents. There are, if, you're ha if you have engineers which are working on a problem, those engineers are gonna come up with very similar solutions. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA's Hopper, when it finally gets released, also has a lot of similarities to this pattern. Although, of course, this pattern is nowhere near the full story for this implementation. Unfortunately, we don't have enough information to really gather what the implementation is going to be, whether it is for gaming or CDNA or for both. Personally, I'm guessing that we're gonna see a similar implementation for both as data center definitely can benefit from this. And for gaming, well, again, it just makes sense that they will do this. I don't think that they're gonna push as many GPU cores or chiplets if you prefer as what the data center, just for example, Intel with the XE architecture, they only are, Again, assuming there's no changes, they're pushing only two tiles for gaming for the higher performance GPUs, but for data center, it can go up to uh, four tiles, which is obviously a ton of performance. But by that point, you're starting to run into tons of power consumption and prices start to skyrocket. And honestly, home users just don't really need that. You can make a different argument though for prosumer type of devices, but yeah, in, on average, I don't expect the, the, the number of chiplets to be as high for, uh, for, um, for gamers. Next up, we're gonna discuss rumors for the next generation Threadripper platform, or more specifically, the processors. And this is from Yuri, who is the author of Ryzen Clock Tuner, which is a pretty damn awesome application, at least in my opinion. So full credit to him for this info. So he has provided this in hex, but if you decode the hex and turn it into ASCII, it says, quote, Genesis 16 cores. This is not the first time we've actually heard of the uh, Threadripper 5000 series. In fact, just recently, we've even seen a code name Chagall, C-H-A-G-A-L-L, uh, -A -A -L -L, being associated with this. So the question is, is this referring instead to the platform and Chagall is the actual processor. Well, as always, we don't really know 100%. It's also interesting that we see a 16 core derivative too, because, well, there's already the 5950X. Maybe this is for people who need a larger number of PCIe lanes or maybe quad channel memory or whatever else. As always, we can only wait for official confirmation from AMD or, you know, to kind of know this for certain. But assuming this information is accurate, honestly, he does have pretty damn good sources at this point, so I would be quite trusting of his information. It'll be interesting to see what the pricing is and AMD's strategy for marketing. We can guess that the highest core count Fred Ripper 5000 series processors are still going to retain 64 cores. They're not going to crank that up. So... The real benefit, of course, is the Zen 3 microprocessor architecture, along with uh, just higher clock frequencies and other bits and pieces that you associate with these uh, next generation processors. 
I think that these CPUs are going to, of course, as always, find their niche and be extremely popular with certain enthusiasts for workstations, for people who do, um, let's say, 3D rendering or, or tons of video encoding or uh, perhaps work on large amounts of data, virtual machines and those type of scenarios, Threadripper is proving to be really popular with 3D artists, for example. So yeah, um, I think there's a possibility we may learn more at CES 2020, which is obviously in about 10 days from now. Um, we can also expect to see more information on Cezanne as well at this conference. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what IMD bring to the table. I think it's going to be a really cool conference. I also wanted to throw in some details of the next Stalker game, Stalker 2, which is looking like it's going to be pretty damn cool. As a quick reminder, it is going to be exclusive on the Xbox platform as well as PC, and it's also been confirmed to be day one for Game Pass, which, again, in my opinion, Game Pass is really proving its value at this point. I think it's a really nice value proposition for people trying out games, and yeah, I've personally got it for uh, PC and Xbox, and I think I kind of use it a lot for games like Gears. But anyway... Furthermore, it will support ray tracing on both the Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X. And also, according to Xbox News on Twitter, it is going to be 4K resolution on the Xbox Series X. But whether this is upsampled or, you know, native, we don't know. But nevertheless, it's going to be a really cool game, I think. And I'm really looking forward to actually playing it. The next couple of months in gaming are going to be really cool with the medium, which was a game I was super excited to play last year, but obviously it got delayed. So, yeah, I'm personally really looking forward to the medium, which is uh, going to be released end of this month. And the final thing to discuss in this video is Intel's Sapphire Rapids, specifically news that Intel have basically confirmed that we're going to be seeing high bandwidth memory embedded onto Sapphire Rapids, and this is thanks to two instructions which um, seem to reference error correction of data which is residing in HBM. Courtesy, by the way, to instlatx64, on Twitter for this discovery. And again, the two instructions we have are 0220H, which is H, uh, high bandwidth memory command slash address parity error. And the second is 0221H, which is HBM data parity error, um, data parity error, excuse me. So as I mentioned a moment ago, these are basically correcting data, which is incorrect within the HBM of the processor. And I think that high bandwidth memory just makes sense in the longer term. Data centers are dealing with absolutely massive quantities of data. And I think in the next couple of years, we're going to start to see either rumors or even AMD themselves confirm that we will see a similar imp implementation for its Epic processors too. So it's going to be really cool, I think. Um, to see how the data center evolves. It's not an area that I work in or anything like that, but I do think data centers are really cool and uh, they generally do get the cool stuff first. But anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then of course, subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell icon. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye for now.